I'm DJ Baba. I've been working professionally in the last nine years. There is a lot said by the media about what London club scene actually is. But I wanted to get the inside view from the DJs about what they think. I don't know if DJs do plan sets. I, I certainly never plan a set. I don't really plan it. I like, I, like, I like the live aspect of going out there. I've never once, ever, ever done that, and I never will. I never plan any sets. I never, no, I never plan. I don't really work sets out. I don't plan a, a specific set. Uh, I tend not to plan my sets. In fact, I never prepare my sets. I can't plan a set. I've heard about this. I've heard about people who plan sets. I don't often plan my sets. The only time I plan my sets if I'm playing is if I'm playing a really big event. Sometimes I do plan my sets um, if it's a really big gig. Three quarters plus of what I do isn't huge events. It's sort of clubs that range in capacity from sort of 800 to 1500 people. And at those, I certainly wouldn't plan anything. I might, I might know what I was going to do for the first couple of records, but no more than that. Once you've got the first three tracks in your head and then the others, they'll just come. I'd like to know where I'm starting and then move on from there. So as long as I've got my first five tunes in order, I know it's going to be the right way. And I'll work out beforehand a few records that I know fit well together so that they're going to be easy to play. I'm not really specific, but I have a general idea of what kind of music I'm going to play. I prepare my record bag so I know where everything is, so I don't get lost. You can really get to know the records that you have in your CD wallet or your, or your box of records and know them inside out. I think that's the main thing. I make sure I take with me a vast selection of the possible records that I might want to play that I'm into at that time. I like to basically go to every set uh, with a box of everything. So that uh, when I go to a gig, I've got um, a reasonable amount of every kind of music in my in my record collection. It's, it's basically knowing what music you've got. Just before I leave the house, an hour before I leave, I'll put myself in my room and just remind myself of my new favourite tunes and just kind of check out what the kind of vibe I want to play on. Once you decide that, you see what the party's like, who's playing before you. What I do have is I do have Whenever I go out, I have the records I'd love to really want, I do want to play. I don't always play those because I think if you're the kind of DJ who plays only ever what you want to play, um, then you might not always completely rock the club. I think it's important to basically be prepared to adjust to whatever people's moods are when you go into a club. The best DJ sets is when you feel part of the group. So it's not like you're dictating, it's almost like you're following. If, if they're reacting to a certain kind of music, you're following what they're doing, in it, essentially, because they're telling you that they like that. So you go, you like that, I'll give you some more of that. It, it's, it's kind of not the other one. I'm not telling you, I'm looking at you and you're telling me what to do. You know, you take it tune by tune, reading the crowd's reaction every, every tune, uh, every step of the way. Just, just generally following the vibe of the crowd. The vibe of the night dictates what I play. It's almost, I, I, I really don't, it sounds strange, but I don't actually kind of know half the time what I'm pulling out. It's almost like I'm being sent there. I know it sounds very bizarre, but I'm kind of being sent there. The night is just, you're connected to the crowd. A real DJ has to really become a part of the crowd. It's not like me and them, it's us. Something can happen on a dance floor if you haven't planned it that's more exciting than if you work it out religiously at home. I think there is a relationship that you form with the crowd if the party is right. The, the skill for you is to try and <clears throat> program those records in, in the right way so that the crowd just goes up and up and up and up and up and then, you know, and you, you get that that, that symbiosis of, of minds and then you just as one and you just kind of control, take it down slightly, get, give everybody a little bit, bit of a breather for a second and then just kind of take it up and they're dictating it to you as much as, you know, you feel you might be dictating it to them. It's, it's just a, it's a two-way thing, you know. London life is so busy. People don't have much time to connect with each other. Most of my friendship and community 
has started from nightclubs. I find that it's easy to connect with people there. Dance music has this interesting, um, I guess, lack of acceptance by the older generation because of this, you know, the criminal justice bill in 94 and this idea of repetitive beats and it's obviously, obviously all drug induced. To them it's an ugly sound. Um, the electronic sound is, is totally alien. So from that starting point, because they don't like the music, they think there must be something wrong with the people. It really breaks with the tradition of a, of a of a traditional song that has a verse, a bridge and a chorus. In dance music it's just like it's just more like a vibe thing and you just have seven, eight minutes of music. So that that is rebellious in its own way from a musical point of view. But the people that are associated with dance music, they they definitely have that certain rebellious element in this the scene is uh, is obviously a non-conformist. Dance music was a youth movement. In 1990, between 1993 and, and 2000, it was a youth movement like it hasn't been seen in this country since God knows when, since the early 70s. Um, it was something that the adults had absolutely no idea about. Yeah, people's, people's perception outside, outside of clubbing or dancing or whatever, they do get a distorted view of it. Drugs do exist on the dance scene. I'd be, you know, I'm no liar. I'm not, I'm not here to be some sort of hollow uh, PR person. Yeah, people's views of the scene, I mean, have been infected really by, um, um, by the media and, and kind of scare stories and, and drugs things and this, that and the other, you know. But I think that's probably the case for so many things that people don't know a lot about or that people aren't very passionate about. Every good form of music has been, had, a, had some sort of scene behind it whether it was rock and roll or jazz or and and every time when it these these uh, genres were being invented um, they were seen as the evil music of the time what the media often don't get is if you go to anywhere where there's loads of sort of 18 to 30 year olds there's drugs if you go to a pub that has nothing to do with dance music there are drugs if you go to a concert which has got absolutely nothing to do with dance music but still appeals to that same demographic, there's an equal amount of drugs. People taking things to get off their heads has been going on for thousands of years, so dance music in that sense is nothing new. People have always gotten out of their heads and, you know, in some cultures alcohol is, is frowned upon and, and yet it's legal here, so I think there's a very strange moralistic duplicity in this country. It's a drug-laden society, either legal or illegally. You get a certain kind of pattern springing up with, with you know, the, talking of this, the stresses of, of modern day life, some people have to just slightly release that. Um, some of us are lucky, just hearing music in the right situation releases that completely. Some people need a little help. It doesn't have to be a, a life of excess, it can be purely about the fun of going out and dancing and, and hearing good music and, and being out with your friends. Never hang up your dancing shoes because the norm is to hang up your dancing shoes, have a family, settle down and get a normal job. Uh, and that's of course something that DJs you always hear all the time. Um, the, no the norm should be that you never give up your dancing shoes and that you always have you know, that little bit of release. As my sister and I always say, you have to have a bit of release in life, it, it keeps you young. The experience of going clubbing and the experience of being out on a dance floor and getting really high or whatever is, it's a definite thing that human beings need to do as a, as a species, you know? So you've got to be able to have that space where you can just have get out claws from real life, your real problems or whatever. You know, the problems of your life 
um, Monday to Friday, uh, and you know, becoming someone else for the weekend. It's a release, you know, and what we are trying to stimulate and trying to act as a catalyst to kind of, you know, give people the opportunity to have a couple of hours out of their 140 whatever hour week and, you know, to let go and have some fun. In certain ways, we are all rats in a run. So if we're given certain kind of stimuli, we're going to go in a certain way, you know. If you give us too stressful a society, then we're going to kind of, you know, freak out a bit. So it's about just getting balance, really, in everything. Balance is the thing for me. It's very hard to achieve, though. They are just the same pop stars and DJs. It's a different kind of feeling watching your favourite DJ to go and see your favourite band, I think. It's much more that you're consuming live music rather than participating. With a DJ, it's very much about participation. Without participation, a DJ is no good and a DJ is not doing his job. I think a superstar DJ, yeah, is, has a more kind of... Um, down-to-earth appeal. I don't think DJs are a patch on, uh, on rock stars at any rate. I really don't. There's a lot more subdued, a lot more, I don't know, a lot more prim, proper and middle class, I suppose. <laughs> the whole pop star thing, the whole, the whole kind of fame and acclaim, I, I, don't, I don't rate it. I mean, I saw it the other day. I was, I was waiting for a bus outside the, the uh, Royal Garden Hotel and there was someone, some big R&B star who was on their way to the Brits and there were, there were hundreds of girls screaming and going absolutely mental when he came out of the doors. It was, it was quite mad to see. It's not about being famous, or a lot of it's not about being famous or being a rock star. It's about loving the music and going out there and wanting to do it. I don't, I don't put being a, a DJ and being a pop star in the same category. But my friends who don't understand about the scene, they just view a DJ as someone who's playing in a place, playing records and you know, no one actually knows who he is in the corner. He's just some guy with his head down DJing. DJing is still very much an underground thing. It's, a, it's an underground cultural thing, you know. If you're into dance music, you know and you get it. But I mean, if I spoke to anyone in my parents' generation, I don't think they'd really get it, I'm, you know, but they know what a pop star is. So I don't know if there's a sex appeal there to the same extent. I'm sure there is to, with some, but I don't think they're going to have... Um, I couldn't imagine Carl Cox having, you know, millions, uh, hundreds of screaming girls waiting outside his hotel. The lucky few are able to have that kind of incredible relationship where, where people are sucked into the, the soundscape of what they play. Now the press have built this big massive hype of this guy who turns up and everyone's just standing directly in front of him, dancing to him, and that's where the whole hype thing for me has come from. But I'd be interested to know what the general public who don't follow dance music would view the DJ as. On the other side of the scale, if we go to a, a, a normal DJ playing in a club, then some do, some have charisma, but most of them don't. The DJ's important, but they're not more important than the dance floor. The dance floor is the star of um, a nightclub, not the DJ. DJing is a buzz. So many out there will do it for free. Some gets paid too much and some not enough. Oh, for no money? Um, I would always play for no money. I mean, I, I, I get a buzz from entertaining people and it, it is about entertaining people. Um, I think it would only come into money seriously if it, if it was to, you know, you, you have to give up your job for the day. I'd rather play than not play, even if it was for nothing, even if it cost me. Yeah, for sure, there's times I go out and I play for no money or a lot less than my normal fee would be because I know the crowd, I know the people who are putting the party on, I know it's going to be a good party, I know it's going to be fun and I know they're really going to get into my music. Free parties, you a DJ, 
with integrity will play for free. You know, for a good cause, like anything charitable, that kind of thing, where, where people are giving their time up for the sake of something else, then absolutely. You know, if it's somebody's birthday and they say, can you come and play, it's like, of course, you know, of course. That, that's always going to apply because that's, that's just about going out and socialising and having fun. Birthdays, bar mitzvahs, weddings, whatever. And the groom actually came up to me and said, someone says you're a DJ. Because <laughs> it was a wedding party. Um, I like this guy because he's my mate, but he's not, I want to hear some psychedelic trance. And I said, well, if he can drive me to my house and back, I'll, I'll do a set. My, I don't want to make thousands of pounds. It's nice to have the money now, but at the time, my main reason for DJing was to be good at it and for everyone to love me and like my music, to be honest. <laughs> it's great when you get paid lots of money for it, of course, but, but you know, playing, playing for nothing is fine. You know. And there's certain places which you can play at where you feel great for playing, but you, they would never be able to pay you. Um, but you need that and that's as important as the money, otherwise you, you need your motivation always. I'm convinced if I only played big events and only charged big money, I would never be able to test things out and truly know whether the tracks actually work properly. You know, the simple fact is you would do it for free because you're DJing on a beach with 2,000 people virtually in the sunshine. So it's that's, you know, definitely that's the deciding factor. The, the best, some of the best gigs you do are, are your unpaid gigs. Definitely even though I'm really fortunate to be able to be paid money to do it. <laughs> I regularly agree to pay for not very much money. <laughs> My agent doesn't really like me doing that. I do that any time. <laughs> don't tell anyone, though. <laughs> I don't really mind, man, you know? It sounds a bit hippie-ish to say that, but I'm kind of, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, money isn't everything, man. Simple as that. I really think if there weren't any nightclubs in London, people would go mad. I think music's a very interesting um, area to look at as regards it's a it's a it's a kind of magnifying glass on the the feelings of of a society, the feelings of you know a world. The music definitely supplies the vibe that people need to sort of drop down their barriers and get into it, you know? We live in a, in a, in a kind of closed off, you know, somewhat cold modern world and um, going out dancing in clubs is, is, is kind of like an antidote for that, definitely. Humans are social mammals and increasingly we're encouraged not to be social and to, to kind of fear, to be fearful of one another. And, and certainly clubbing is the last opportunity to kind of throw that notion into the dustbin. You know, it's the, the perfect escapism, really. It's a chance to get away from, you know, for those eight hours or whatever that you're in a club, everything else outside of the club does not exist. You know, it doesn't matter. I'm from Belfast and, um, you know, there's a big sort of um, religious divide in my country. But there's, when events are run, you know, big events, when people go to these dance events, you know, it doesn't matter what religion you are, everyone's together, there's no fighting, there's no, you know, there's no talk of religion, everyone's together, and that's the thing about the dance scene that I like, the people where it brings people together. Strangers become friends like that. It's, uh, it's a very uh, uh, unifying bond. It's, very, it's a very basic thing that people sometimes need a good excuse to gather together, and music is a great excuse to, to gather together. It's like anything, if there's enough people in a dance floor feeling good at one time, um, it you know, change, might change your mindset when you go home, might, help, might make you think about something differently the next day if you've had a great experience with other people. If something grabs their attention all at the same time, there's an energy which emanates from that group of people and that's what you feed off when you're DJing. Equally, um, if you're DJing and it's not going very well, you get in the kind of negative energy that makes you feel like shit. It's kicking the shit out of a club with 
you know, 400 people going completely mental to whatever you're playing and, you know, you'd have to be some kind of weirdly antisocial psychopath to not find that thrilling experience. In my opinion, personally, I believe that those moments are very much drug-induced, generally. You have to realise that, you know, the, the world that a DJ inhabits is a twilight world, is a weekend world where 90% of the people that you're coming into contact with are um, of an altered state of mind and really it's nothing that's going to stop wars or, um, you know, uh, save the planet. When that moment happens, when people aren't on drugs, then something truly amazing has happened. You can just be so happy. You know, some of the happiest moments are like on a dance floor with your friends. This music just lifting you higher, 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 which, you know, you can't find that in, in normal, normal life sort of thing. I don't know, it probably sounds a bit hippie-ish, but it's almost like a, a moment where you're connected to the universe. You know, you're, it's not just you, it's, it's you, you, you connect with everything around you and you find this kind of inner calm and everything just is, is just perfect, it's just perfect. You know, it's, if, if, if you could maintain that state for um, your life, it would, be, it would be, I guess, ecstasy, permanent ecstasy really, wouldn't it? You know, a good night out can make you can make you look at life differently. It made me more open-minded and uh, made me see life in a slightly different way. Spiritually, music just just soothes the savage beast, really. So, you know, and I must admit, I'm much prone to a bit of savage beastness at times. <laughs> I need a bit of music to just calm me down, calm down. <laughs> magic that people receive on a dance floor can change their lives overnight and once their lives are changed continual experience and continual information that creates experience will give them wisdom that they can then use some way in their personal private or business lives for sure without the dance music you, you know your heart your heart is, is growing older quicker <laughs> you need to release and have fun and dance yeah it's very very important in all life. Dance music definitely spreads the love. <laughs>
huge crowd, the mood going right up. Where you really feel like everyone is on the same wavelength. 10,000 people eating out of the palm of your hands. I've had tears in my eyes. The, the, the correct synapses in the brain start popping off, going... <laughs> establishing a groove, getting people into having a good time, getting people to have fun, for fun's sake. And then once the, the crowd start to have this fun, something happens and there's a click. Where everything just seems to go, not to go well, but just is moving. Where you're genuinely moved by the moment, by the occasion, which you are responsible for. And in those magical moments, you, you do kind of think, you know, you think you feel like the luckiest man alive sort of thing, That's or woman alive, obviously. And what's exciting about DJing is the fact that that doesn't happen very often, but you're constantly searching for it. When it does happen, it's, that's why you DJ, that's the whole reason for doing it. That's the whole reason why I didn't become a doctor like my parents wanted me to. I, that's why I was a DJ, because I had that connection on the dance floor with a DJ, and you're constantly chasing it, I think, as a DJ. <laughs> And the trouble is it becomes like any any euphoric state, you go, you find yourself chasing it. I have a feeling it's just a pure euphoria. I, I, I just have smiling, I've just, you know, obviously happy that I've got the opportunity to actually play to these people and the fact that they're loving it and I'm loving it. It's, it's like, I just imagining it to score on a goal in an FA Cup final. If you're a footballer, your aim is to score a goal, okay? So if you're a footballer, you want to get the ball in the back of the net and it's all, yay! For me, as a DJ, I, I like to see people on the dance floor during the breakdown of the track being so messed up that they're sort of gurning and they're a bit like... Mm. And for me, if I look out on the dance floor and I see someone so into it that they're just completely involved in the music and they just have no idea what they're doing, I just think, yes, <laughs> I've done my job. That's exactly what I wanted. That, that is what you're trying to do. You're trying to create that, just that instant on the dance floor where everybody's just going to, they're all going to identify with it. And whether it be the big breakdown and the big hands in the air and the, whatever it may be, it's, um, there are those moments, and I think I think when you get that interaction from people, um, that's that's that is that is absolutely inspirational. Looking out at five thousand people, just absolutely going nuts and loving it, and it does you know you almost a little bit of a, it makes you that happy. I, I've dragged people up onto stage with me, friends of mine and they've seen you know a huge crowd and people really with you and kind of arms in the air when 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 you're at the right moment and everything seems to be working the, the crowd is so up for it they're so into it that you could just do pretty much anything and that and they'd still be they'd still be down with it you know it'd still work when everything clicks the moment's right i myself feel like i'm feeding off the party and the party feels like it's feeding off me it feels like i don't have to i can't put a not put a foot wrong. I feel I know ex instinctively what record to play next, or what's going to work on the dance floor, or which way I need to take the dance floor by playing what kind of record. When you're in a particular moment like that, it feels like someone else is telling you what that next record is. It's almost like there's there's a, a person stood next to you saying, right, next record should be this, and you put it on, and it's the perfect record. You see, it works, and and people are dancing. You can see all the hands in the air. That is. Nothing beats that, that is an amazing experience. The magic of music, I didn't really know what it was back then, I just knew it existed. I knew there was something hypnotic about the sound that could put you into a transcendental state of mind. Um, um, but didn't know the science of it, I've since learned what it is. Uh, but knew that that magic existed and that the, the percussive sound could in some way act like a mantra in meditation. Yeah, when, when you get those moments, they're incredible because it does feel like everybody knows exactly what you're thinking and, and it, you have a, a special connection between people. That's the magic of dance music. The percussive sound and percussive light at certain speeds will alter the brainwaves. And it's just like, 
uplifting, kind of spiritual, real spiritual feeling. You know, everybody else in the in the in the in the building is is feeling exactly the same thing. It's 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 you know, it's a it's a great thing. You know, it's got a great power. You know, human beings are are amazing things. You know, we're a lot deeper than we give ourselves credit for. Really. <laughs> Thousands of years ago, there there must have been one guy who was sort of on the on the drums the first and started singing first and got everybody going. And civilizations across the globe still look to leaders that are able to bring groups of people together. I guess the modern day DJ is sort of like a, a, just a progression from that. DJs are uh, definitely the new shamans, and in fact, there's a um, uh, Mr. C was in a band called The Shaman. I used to be in a band called The Shaman, and the name comes from a word called shaman. Now, the shaman will go into this magical world of the other, gain ideas, and bring those ideas back into the community in the form of dance. The shamans used to chew bark that sent them a bit doolally and you know there might be some hallucinogenic or some mind altering state in whatever they did, I believe anyway, and I think it's a combination of repetitive beats, a trance, a large amount of people in the same room and someone kind of telling you what to do, uh, you know, it's, it alters people's minds. The, the shaman, very much like a DJ in many ways, has always had his rhythm always had his drum. And once the shaman has been on this magical journey, he will gather the community together, dress up in outrageous outfits and costumes, um, dance, uh, will play the drums, and chant to the community, to the tribe, while the tribe join in with a dance that will be for uh, many various reasons. It can be to help with the crop, to make the rain come, for healing purposes. There can, there's, a, there's a million reasons to go into this trance with the tribe, and it's the shaman's job to orchestrate the community into a state of trance, which is, for me, completely parallel with the modern day DJ. Just is, is, is a very powerful position, I feel. You know, it's, you, you, you're in touch with people's, people's kind of deep, core kind of feeling. I do think that DJs to some extent are the Pied Pipers of like the new millennium. I mean they do sort of play their tune and everyone follows. DJs are able to connect with people on a spiritual level certainly different to other people because they are maybe intuitive to what people want and they kind of can understand a communal sense of, of, of beat and pattern and can kind of enhance a group or collective, uh, collective uh, energy. I think if you claim that every DJ was some kind of shaman that you'd kind of be left out of town really. 
I don't think DJs are like Shermans at all. Some DJs are definitely artists, and, and, and some DJs are definitely shamans, and some DJs could definitely be considered, you know, all of those things. But I think the majority are not. I think the majority are craftsmen. Most DJs cannot be considered as shaman, as you asked. I think they're pretty much more run like businessmen. Dance music nowadays is, is business and kind of the DJ is, is part of that. And the fact that kind of DJs are able to charge extortionate amounts of money to go and play at clubs, for example, there's no spiritualism there. That's pure capitalism. I know a lot of people are very passionate about music and especially dance music and some people you know go to a nightclub with the feeling that it's a church and you know music's their religion and, and things like that which is fine but um, I don't I don't believe that's not the, necessarily the, fact, the the way for me clubbing and going out dancing is like I said this a while ago it's, an, it's the new it's the new religion isn't it people don't go to church so much nowadays Every weekend, people religiously go clubbing or they go to parties. I know spiritual sounds quite quite serious to say like that, but there is a, an underlying, deeper reason why people do these things. You know, why people go out into the club environment and listen to the type of music that is dance music on a regular basis. And you know, uh, essentially, it, it, it all can become quite primitive. Really, it's quite it's quite instinctive. The desire to kind of uh, uh, lock on to a beat, a pulse. It exists within our life, it exists around us every day, it exists with the cycle of our bodies, and it makes logical sense that we would like to do these things. Tribal music is all at around 130 BPM, which is the BPM of house music, generally, when it's played out, not when it's made, but when it's played out, it usually ends up around 130 BPM. And that's obviously says something. The heartbeat has an integral connection with dance music, especially house music. Uh, the steady 4-4 rhythm that I think that you naturally connect with. In, in the trance scene and the, the dance scene, it's very... everyone follows the music so intensely, they know what the next tune's coming in before it's even played. Whereas in the side trance scene, it's not about who's playing or what the tune is. It's about the groove, it's about the rhythm, it's about how they're feeling at that point in time. And yeah, that's the only scene I've seen the spiritual side of DJing. But if you think about the way the shaman was involved in the tribe, as you said, sometimes he'd bring people together, and and then in certain points of the evening, they'd have certain types of experience. But it'd be involved uh, drinking some kind of alcoholic drink or uh, licking a frog's back or whatever kind of hallucinogenic experience they wanted to try and get into, and then they'd have drums and things like that. And I think maybe that is like the small sliver. DJ is like a small slice of that whole world. A good DJ and an up for it willing crowd and possibly the right additional substances, whether they be alcohol or pills or potions or what have you, all go into the mix, I think, to sort of create the same sort of, you know, this, this bonding experience, definitely. Yeah, I think there are some DJs that have a profound effect on people and, um, uh, and that's quite amazing that they can do that just by playing records. What they're saying is true. There is definitely something tribal in it. When I get best club experience, it's such a good feeling. Everyone is connected. You see people as they truly are, with no class, no gender, no discrimination, but happy souls all united together. It's just so uncomplicated.
get your ass on the dance floor and dance and have a good time. Let all your inhibitions go and just have a good time. And that's what it's all about. Because without the party, there'd be, yeah, there'd be nothing, really. Let your hair down, have a great time. Come on, you know, let's have it. Let, let's go and have fun. Let's go and have some fun. Let's, let's enjoy ourselves. Live life to the full and have fun and show everybody around you some love. Really, really getting down and having a good time. So a bit of a lift vibe is always good. Sometimes try to scare people. In the party. Sometimes try to make them cry. To gain knowledge and wisdom. Obviously making people happy. Happy, fun, bouncy. I'll go out there really just to try and shock them. Question everything. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> they go away smiling. Here, we're all together, and let's all go nuts. Let's go nuts. Let's, 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 let's go nuts. Oh, this is interesting. Just sort of get rid of the weekday worries for five or five, six hours, or 48 hours if you're really hardcore. I, I used to go clubbing all the time. Every Friday, every Saturday, sometimes even more often. Clubbing was, you know, was, is, was and still is my first love. I've got the music in me. Yes! <laughs> um, when I'm on the dance floor, when I'm on the dance floor. More uplifting rather than kind of darker and depressing. An element of slightly tongue in cheek, there being an element of fun in the party, I think. Yeah, yeah, yes. Lose self-consciousness. Dance, dance, dance. You see, you didn't think you danced to that, but you did. Party. You've hit that for me, you've hit the nail on the head. You can have a good time. To have fun. Boom. Fun. Boom. Fun. Boom. Fun. I don't know how far how fast is a regular heartbeat heartbeat. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting far too deep, I'm I'm, I'm afraid probably. <laughs> Get your ass on your dance floor. Let's have a good time. Some love. You get lost in music and the element of fun for fun's sake. Really okay. The feeling, the, the buzz is, is sensational and... Um, it's amazing.